Hi guys, this is Maverick Pua, the Chemistry Guru. Now in this video, we want to discuss the suggested solution for 2019 A-Levels H2 Chemistry, Paper 1, Question 5. Alright, Question 5 goes like this, which species contains two pi bonds? So we're given four options. Option 1 is Al2Cl6, aluminum chloride dimer. Option 2, carbon dioxide. Option 3, CH3, CHO. So this is our aldehyde functional group. Option 4, CH2, CH, CH3. This is actually an alkene functional group. So later when we draw the Lewis structure, it will be slightly more obvious. Of course, we will want to choose within these four options, which one would have two pi bonds. Then we run through options A, B, C, and D, and we want to choose the correct answer. Now, this question is under chemical bonding, and it is pretty straightforward, right? We just need to be able to draw out the Lewis structure for each of these species and we see how many pi bonds are present for each of these species. So in terms of concept, maybe we can briefly run through. Now what we need to know is between any two atoms, X and Y, if it forms a covalent bond between X and Y, then if it is a single bond, it will be a sigma bond. If it is a double bond, it will be one sigma bond, one pi bond. And if it is a triple bond, then it will be one sigma and two pi bonds. So maybe let me write this down. If I have x bonded to y, of course it can also be x bonded to x or y bonded to y, but this is general. If it is x bonded to y and x double bonded to y or x triple bonded to y. So we will have in general these three different permutations in terms of the number of covalent bonds we can have between two atoms. So if it is a single bond, a single bond will be a sigma bond. So this will be a one sigma bond. And a sigma bond, it is a head-on overlap. And a sigma bond is more stable than a pi bond because head-on overlaps, the extent of the orbital overlap it is better as compared to a pi bond, where a pi bond it is a sideway overlap. So between any two atoms, if they can only form one bond, then the first bond that must be formed will have to be a sigma bond because sigma bond, the orbital overlap it is better. So therefore it will be more stable. So it is preferred. So the first bond has to be sigma bond. Now the subsequent bonds will always be a pi bond. So if it is a double bond, then it will be one sigma bond and one pi bond. So this is one sigma and one pi bond. So we have to remember a double bond is not just the pi bond. The pi bond it is a second bond. And in terms of bond energy, sigma bond should be more stable than the pi bond. The third scenario will be here where I have a triple bond. If it is a triple bond, then it will be one sigma and two pi bonds. The first bond, as mentioned, is always a sigma bond. And between any two guys, I can only form one sigma bond. Pi bond, I can have two pi bonds. So this will be the scenario for triple bond. So we just need to make use of this concept for this question. And of course, we would need to be able to draw out the Lewis structure for options one, two, three, and four. But they are pretty common species. So we should be able to draw them out quite quickly. So option one, Al2Cl6, this is our aluminum chloride dimer. So it will look something like this. Now in principle, we should be familiar with aluminum chloride dimer. We will just show you the dimer and how the Lewis structure looks like. Now keep in mind, because aluminum chloride AlCl3, by itself, the aluminum will be electron deficient because it is in group 13 and it will only form three covalent bonds with chlorine. So in total, you only have six electrons around its valence shell. So it is considered as electron deficient. And of course, chlorine as a halogen, you will have three lone pairs. So what can happen in Al2Cl6, you can form a dimer where your chlorine will act as a donor. You donate two electrons to aluminum and I'll have a dative bond between chlorine and aluminum. So the driving force behind dimerization is aluminum is electron deficient, six electrons short of two electrons. And chlorine, of course, it has available lone pair for donation. So one person can donate, one person can accept the two electrons. So therefore, there will be a dative bond from chlorine to aluminum. That's why this arrow will represent the dative bond from Cl to Al. Now, there's another dative bond here. 
from this chlorine to this aluminum. Same idea, this Cl will donate two electrons to this aluminum, so both aluminum atoms in this case would be octet. Now if I consider this configuration, all these bonds are considered as single bonds and sigma bonds. Remember, a dative bond, it is a normal covalent bond. The only difference is the source of electrons. Normal covalent bond is between aluminum and chlorine. Aluminum contribute one electron, chlorine contribute one electron. So this is a normal covalent bond. Dative bond is chlorine donates two, aluminum donates nothing. You just accept the two electrons. But this is still considered as a sigma bond because it is a single bond. So this is not a pi bond. So option one is out. There are no pi bonds. Now moving on, option two, carbon dioxide, this is very straightforward. We should be able to draw this out very quickly. And between carbon and oxygen, it will be a double bond. So therefore, I'll have one pi bond for each double bond. This carbon double bond oxygen will also have one pi bond. So carbon dioxide will have a total of two pi bonds. And of course, this will be part of the answer that we want. Now, if I look at option three, option three, which is an aldehyde, CH3, C double bond, O hydrogen. Now, I didn't draw the CH3 bonds because it is saturated. So all these bonds will be single bond and sigma bonds. So basically, we can ignore that guy, right? We just focus on the C double bond O. Now, C double bond O, this is a double bond. So therefore, you will have one sigma and one pi bond. In this case, this guy has only one pi bond. So therefore, it is not part of the answer. Now, finally, if I look at option four, CH2, CH, CH3. Again, this CH3, it is saturated, so we can just lump them together. We don't need to expand the bond. The double bond is between the first two carbon. This is a CH2 double bond to a CH. So this double bond has only one sigma bond, one pi bond. So this alkene in total will only have one pi bond. So after running through these four very simple examples, we can finally come back to the answer and we can compare the four options. So in this case, only option number two has two pi bonds. The rest of the species do not have two pi bonds. Option one has no pi bond. Options three and four has only one pi bond. So the answer to this question very obviously, we have to be option C, two only. All right, so that was the discussion involving 2019, paper one, question five. So if you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.